Timelines are really important from a forensics perspective. And let's talk about how to actually get a timeline from a disk image. Now, most disk images that you're going to get will have timestamps associated with the files. If they didn't have timestamps, it would be a little bit odd because file systems generally keep track of when files are created, accessed, modified. So we're going to use a little program called Log File Parser. And I'm going to run that here and I'm going to select my log file. Now my log file in this case is going to be a disk image. And we're going to be able to extract the log file from the disk image. It's going to figure out where the NTFS partition is and it's going to extract all of that information. Actually I'm getting some errors which isn't necessarily uncommon. So we're getting some reference number mismatches. That's okay. We can just keep clicking through these. What it's doing is it's reading from the log file here and the log file is the file that exists in the master file table that keeps track of all of the changes to the file system. This is very similar to a database that may have a transaction log. So the transaction log is going to keep track of any changes to the database just in case there are problems that need to be put back into place later. So now we've actually got that. And the data that was created is in this directory, NTFS output. And you can see that we've got some Excel spreadsheets. So what I want to do now is I actually want to run Excel and I'm going to import those. Of course, it would just open them up for me, but I don't want to do that. So I'm going to open up a blank workbook here. I want to, first of all, just say, ask me later and then close this out. I'm gonna to go to data and I'm going to say from text, I'm going to import some information that's in a separated value form. And the extension on that is generally CSV, but in this case, it's not a comma separated value. So I'm reluctant to call it comma separated value. So CFDI 320, log file parser, NTFS output, and I'm going to import my log file. So this is delimited. I'm going to say next. And in this case, it's actually delimited with this. The pipe or up and down bar. And you can see the moment I put that in, it's actually broken the data up into the column. So now I can just click finish. It's going to import it into my existing worksheet. Actually, let me put this up here because I really want to import it up all the way to the top in the upper left-hand corner. So I'm just going to run through this again really quickly. And then I can just say finish here. So I'm going to import it into an existing worksheet. And now you can see that we've got the data. Once we have all of the information here, we can, of course, do searches, and we could look for, I don't know, let's look for that, for example. So we found a file that is a JPEG. And we've got all of the columns that are associated with that. I can also, of course, sort if I wanted to sort based on the file name, for example. I could sort based on the file name. So once it's in Excel, I can do lots of interesting things with it but I need to get it into Excel. And the best way to do that is just to do an import from my data tab. I'm going to import from text. As I said before, I could just open it up in Excel because it is a CSV. The problem is it's not actually comma separated. So in order to tell Excel what my delimiter is, I need to do the import thing. So once we're done, we're just going to delete this here, because I don't want to leave it behind 
that way somebody else can come in and do the work as well. So you can use log file parser and that will actually generate a comma separated value file for you that you can import into Excel and then be able to search for data and sort it in different ways so that you can actually figure out what's going on within the log file from that file system.